This exercise will teach you a technique that repositions a layer mask over time to create a simple animated lower third. Now if you created and saved that exercise file from the first lesson on Video Basics, you can use that. Otherwise, you can use the file in the Project Media folder called Animated Lower Third. To begin, we need to make sure that the timeline is the correct time frame. By default, most video clips will be five seconds, and we need this one to actually be a little bit longer because we want to create a seven second timeline animation to run over a nine second clip. And then during that time, we'll create an animation over the first second, we're going to hold for five, and then animate off during the last second. To extend the length of the timeline, you'll put your cursor at the edge of any one of these layer clips, select it first, and then put your cursor here, and then drag out to the right to increase the duration. I want to go right to nine, like so, and then you would just expand the rest of them to fit. Go through each layer on your timeline panel, paying attention to the scroll bar here so that you make sure that you have every single thing selected. Now since we're going to be using a layer mask, we need to mask this whole area here where the two bars and text are, but we need all that information on a single layer to create a mask. Let's select these three layers and holding down our Alt or Option key, choose Merge Layers from the Options menu. We'll hide the original and we'll see that its file is named Tim Kolb Merged. So that will help us identify that one apart from the original files that were used to create it. Next, we'll create the mask. Use your rectangular marquee tool to grab a selection across the screen like so. And you also might want to hide everything else on screen. And then we want to add a feather to this. Now this technique, before I show you the feather, this technique could actually work with spotlight effect with a circle shape. So you don't necessarily have to do like a straight rectangular bar across the top. It could be a circle for this cool spotlight effect with a circular or elliptical shape. To add a feather, click on the Refine Edge button on the Options bar and add, uh, you can go as far as you like. Let's do something like a five pixel feather. And what this does, I'm going to type that in. What this does is it adds a little breathing room above and below the selected area so that it's a smoother, cleaner mask when we're hiding it and showing the content below it. As a matter of fact, let's shift the edge about 10%, and this will further help to soften the selection's edges during our animation. Click OK, and then click the Mask button at the bottom of the Layers panel here. You'll notice that the mask is linked to your original. Just click in the center there to unlink it, because we are going to modify the position of this mask. Before you reposition the mask, make sure that the mask itself is selected. You can tell it's selected by those little white lines around the four corners of the mask thumbnail. Move the playhead to the starting position of your document. It was already there on 00, zero but it might have moved, so just make sure that it's there at the start. We also want to extend this guy out to the full length of the rest of the clip. And then, with that thumbnail selected, what you're going to do is move the layer mask to its starting position, which is actually to the left of the layer completely off the screen. So I'm going to hold down my Shift key, grab my Move tool, and then click and drag to the left. So you can see by the thumbnail that the layer artwork is still in place, but now the mask artwork is completely hidden from view. To create the animation, we need to set down keyframes on the timeline. We'll expand this layer by clicking on the triangle. Note that there are several options that can be modified for this particular layer. Since we're working with a layer mask and we've just moved the mask off the screen, we want to use the Layer Mask Position option. Click the stopwatch here, and that sets down a keyframe at the 00, zero mark. A keyframe will mark the beginning and or the end of any change or transition in a layer's look and feel. So we've dropped in the layer mask position here, and now we're going to move the playhead, the timeline indicator, to the one frame mark, and click the diamond to insert another keyframe. Now that we have the end point of our animation set, what we can do is hold down our shift key, we still have the black arrow, the move tool selected, we still have our thumbnail for our mask selected, holding down the Shift key, clicking and dragging 
So repositioning the mask back to its original starting point on top of the artwork. So if you scrub the playhead now, you will see your animation. Woo, yay. Okay, so now we need to do the same effect at the end of the video after holding it there for a few seconds so that it disappears again. And to do that, we just have to repeat what we just did, but in reverse order. We'll move the current time indicator to the six second mark, like so, and insert a keyframe. So that begins the beginning of this mask going off screen again. Move the timeline indicator to the seven mark, add another keyframe, and this time, with the mask still selected, you're going to hold down your shift key and remove it from view again. If you want, you can scrub the playhead from start to finish or click the play button so you can see that your lower third animates to reveal. It will hold for several seconds and then it will disappear. The next step is to make your artwork ready for your NLE. First, you need to create an alpha layer. Hide all of the layers, which we already have done, except for the selection that spans the width of the bar. I'll put this here so that we can see the artwork while we're doing this next step. We'll make a selection between those guides, like so. Then you'll go to your Channels panel and click the button at the bottom to create a channel from your selection. Then save your work. What you do at this point after saving is create a duplicate file, like so, and merge all of your layers into one. Then, this will preserve your original layered file in case you need to go back into it and make adjustments at a later time. Now, inside the duplicate, you can delete all of the layers except for that new merged layer. To delete your layers, you'll probably need to select them individually, remove any locks to activate the trash can. So you do that one at a time, leaving just that merged layer in place. Then you can save your file as a PICT, a TARGA, or a PING24 for easy importing into your NLE. And if you need to render the movie, go up to the File, Export, Render Video option.